Hello, welcome to Digital DJ Tips, and today we're talking about how to plug your phone into your DJ gear. This is a live lesson. If you are with us live, please ask questions. If you're not, you're watching the recording, and that's cool, you can ask questions anyway. The team will always be with you to help in the comments underneath on the platform you're on. We're the world's leading DJ school, the people behind Rock the Dance Floor, the best-selling book on Amazon on how to DJ, and also, the people with lessons from names like Jazzy Jeff, James Hype, DJ Angelo, Layback Luke, and many, many more. So you're in the right place if you're trying to improve your DJing or your DJ production. Right, let's get straight to it, people. This is my phone. This is my DJ controller. I'm using a tractor controller here. What I'm about to show you works with all brands of controller with a certain proviso, which I will tell you about in this lesson. And the point is we've got a phone with music on. We've got a phone that could have samples on. There's a lot of sample players you can get for your phones, which will let you trigger samples and play them over your music, for instance. Uh, and uh, we've got a phone that might have a full DJ app on it. It might have a complete DJ program that you can actually DJ from. So these are all good things to have plugged into your main DJ setup. Why? Well, for instance, you could have um, your Spotify or your Tidal or your um, Beat Source link or your Beatport link or whatever open on here. And when you get requests, or even if you hear about a song that you haven't got and you want to play it, you can patch it in and play it in your DJ set just by getting it over the air via those sources. You can also have that, that DJ app we just spoke about as a backup. So if anything goes wrong when you're DJing, your laptop crashes or whatever, you can quickly switch over to your auxiliary input on your DJ gear and you can start DJing from a DJ app on your phone while you figure that out. And you can also, as I mentioned, have a sample player on here. And that means you could have your DJ idents, your DJ drops, your jingles, and you could be dropping these into your set. And especially with a lot of today's DJ gear, like this is a tractor controller, and this has got loads of um, good stuff on it when it comes to samples and playing samples. But a lot of DJ gear today hasn't. The standalone XDJ units from Pioneer DJ, the Prime units from Denon DJ, they're great DJ setups but they don't have a sampler on them. So you could have your sampler on your phone, just plugged into the back of your gear, bang, 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 dropping samples in left, right, and center. There's loads of reasons why you might want to plug your phone into your DJ equipment. And today we're gonna to talk about how to do it. We're gonna concentrate on controllers, but it's gonna be the same if you're using a mixer. Easy if you're using a mixer, because you're gonna have more inputs to choose from. Uh, but today I'm gonna to concentrate on what most people have, which is a controller. If you do have a DJ mixer, great. You can do what I'm about to describe on a spare channel on your DJ mixer. So what do you need to do it? Well, obviously you need a phone running whatever software it is you want to use. So you could be using, as I said, Spotify, Tidal, SoundCloud, Go Plus, Beatport Link, BeatSource Link, whatever it is you've got. As long as there's an app for it on your phone and you can play your tunes, you're good. Uh, and could be anything else as well. It could be the native music app, whatever. Whatever it is you've got music on. You can have a whole mix on your native music app, a whole DJ mix or two that you've prepared. So it does go wrong, you can press play and it's like you're still DJing while you're sorting it out. So you're gonna need the program that you want running on your phone. You're also gonna need some way of getting the music out of your phone. Now this is easier said than done nowadays because not so long in distant memory, they took away the headphone socket. Now some phones, some enlightened phone manufacturers still have a headphone socket on their phones. Sony phones, for instance, some Android phones still have a headphone socket and a lot of iPads, for instance. So if you're lucky enough to have one of those units, then great, you can just use that. But if you're not lucky enough to have one of those units, then you're gonna need another way of getting your phone to be plugged into and to work with your DJ gear. So that's the first thing you need. And the second thing you need is a way to plug it into your DJ gear. Without those two things, and obviously the connecting cables, then you're not gonna be able to do this. And that's gonna be a deal breaker for some people. Now the first bit about this is getting your cable plugged into your phone. Now most of you will probably have one of these knocking around. A little adapter cable. Uh, you can get these, this is a lightning to 3.5 millimeter cable, designed really for plugging in your wired headphones, but it works just as well to plug into your DJ gear. This will get a stereo output from this iPhone, but also you could use the uh, equivalent one for your Samsung phone, for instance, or whatever. These do exist for all phones, uh, and there are generic ones out there as well. So you're gonna need one of those. Then you're gonna need a cable to go from this, this headphones out socket, to the back of your DJ unit. 
your DJ controller needs to have an auxiliary input. Now I'm gonna give you a really hacky way to get around this if it hasn't got an auxiliary input, but really it needs an auxiliary input. So you're gonna need a cable to go between the two. So people get really hung up about this. It's not hard. Basically, you need some way of getting from that, which I've shown you, to the normal kind of cable that looks like this, the end of the cable anyway looks like this, that would plug into the back of a DJ console on the RCA inputs. So I've got this little adapter here, and the reason I've got this is because I couldn't find a one cable to do the job I'm about to show you, but it's a good lesson because it doesn't matter how you concoct this. This is a twin RCA to female stereo jack, and I've got a cable here which is just basically two stereo jacks that I had knocking around. So I'll plug that in one end, and that's gonna plug in the back of my gear here, uh, and let me have that feed into the other way around actually. You always got to get your, your red in the right one. That's gonna have my feed from there. And then the other end of it is gonna plug into here. You can get a cable which will do that in one go. You can't get a cable that's lightning to RCAs for some reason, but you can get a cable that'll do those two cables I've got there in one, that's fine. As long as you can get it plugged into the back of your DJ gear, then you're good to go. That's one way of doing it. Now another way of doing it is a little bit posher, uh, is to use a adapter. Now uh, an audio adapter or an audio interface looks like this. Now these exist for the iPhone and for the Android ecosystem as well. They normally come with a cable that plugs in like that. Uh, and you can see that uh, we've got, uh, this has been recognized by my phone and we're off and running with that. Uh, when you go in the back here, you generally won't go through a channel of your controller. You'll generally go through the really lame little auxiliary volume control that will be hidden somewhere with no bass, no treble, no mid, no low, no high, no effects, no nothing. Uh, and then it will just go straight from that control out the back of your unit. With a tractor controller, the reason I set this one up is they're a bit different and if you're a tractor user, you can pat yourself on the back because the S3 and the S4, they go through a channel and you can select the channel and then you get all your effects and you get all your normal controls here uh, as well to adjust the volume and to get it all right. So it also means it will record it if you hit record in your DJ software. So it's a really good thing to have, uh, to have that set up that way if you're a tractor user. Um, so the other thing to remember about this, of course, is that if you're using your phone, you're not gonna have any real control over it like you get with jog wheels and so on. So if you're dropping in requests and stuff like that using your phone and you are um, thinking you're gonna be able to beat mix them, you ain't gonna be able to do any of that stuff. It's not gonna work out that way. Uh, it's best just to quickly drop it in cleanly and get out of it again. I mean, it's easy to mix out from your phone, but not so easy to mix into stuff from your phone. Of course, if you're dropping eye dents over and stuff like that, then there's no real problem there. The other problem people have is that they find um, that sometimes the volume can be too quiet. Even when you've got everything maxed out on your controller, sometimes the volume can be too quiet. And the reason for that is twofold. One, it just is what the volume is. But secondly, phones have a headphones limiter on them, which stops you deafening yourself in your headphones by mistake. And you wanna go into your headphones and turn that off. Go into the headphone settings on your phone uh, and turn off the limit volume when on headphones setting, which will give you just that little bit more headroom. Uh, and that will give you, hopefully, a loud enough volume to play with. And then, of course, you can adjust what you've got on your DJ uh, unit in order to, to get that volume a little bit higher. Now, one question we've been asked several times when we've gone through this lesson in the past is, my DJ controller doesn't have an auxiliary input. In other words, I can't plug stuff round the back because there ain't nowhere to plug stuff around the back. All I've got is a microphone input. Can I use that to plug my phone into? Do you know what? An audiophile, a professional, someone who's got skin in the game and are gonna get fired if something goes wrong would tell you, no, 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 you cannot do that. But I ain't none of those things. I'm here to tell you that yes, you can plug your phone into the microphone socket. It is gonna be in mono, because the microphone socket only takes a mono input. You're gonna need the right lead. You're gonna need a lead, ideally, that sums the output of your phone from stereo to mono, so that you're not getting the left channel or the right channel. You're getting both channels put together. 
and you're going to need to turn down the microphone both you're going to need to turn down both the input from here to as low as possible in fact turn it off and then put it up as low as possible and see how loud it comes through and also if you're lucky enough to have a microphone socket with its own attenuator or volume have that down low as well and the reason is that microphone sockets accept a very 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 low audio level compared to what your phone kicks out it's called a line level coming out of your phone and it's a, a, a different level going into a microphone socket so the chances are very high you're going to distort. If you've ever plugged in a CDJ into a um, phono or into a record deck plug on the back of a mixer, you'll know what I mean. But you can do it. And if you've got a controller, like let's just run over to our, to our um, this is the behind the scenes camera here. And I'll be going very quiet now because I'm not on my normal microphone. Uh, but let's run over here and let's grab a DJ controller that hasn't got a auxiliary input but it has got a microphone input. Now, you could concoct that cable together that will plug your phone into here. This has actually got a level on it, this DDJ400, and you could set that level very low and set the level very low on your phone, and you know what, it does work. And a, an absolute push, you can get music playing through there. So why the hell would you wanna take that risk? Well, if you're DJing in public with a DJ controller that hasn't got any backup system on it, it's a nice idea just to know that you've managed to, to hack together a backup system in case, just in case it goes wrong, then you can hit play on something else, even if it is plugged in mono through the mic input. Of course, that is um, assuming you're not using the microphone input with a microphone, but that is a, a, a way around this. Couple of other tips, turn off notifications on your phone. Um, my notifications are full of the team saying, your audio has gone off, hey, it's back. Uh, so I didn't turn them off. Uh, but turn them off on your phone, especially if they make a noise because you don't want them beeping through the PA system. I once played the windows closing down theme through a club PA system in front of about 500 people, not cool, by mistake. Uh, but secondly, um, um, airplane mode is probably the best bet, just to stop anything happening that you're not expecting when you're playing music on your phone. So we've been talking today uh, with a slight gap in the middle, which we will chop out on the replay video. So if you're watching the replay, you didn't see that, uh, of uh, the microphone failing. I don't, still don't know why it failed. Oh, it failed because it's, um, it's died underneath the desk, but the battery was showing full power when I turned it on. So interesting. Can't trust the uh, power meters on our microphone batteries anymore. Maybe we need some new batteries. Anyway, sorry about that. But now we're gonna go over there because if you're new to all of this, you might be wondering what this means. Keep calm and ask once. Well, this is all about the interaction. These live streams, these live lessons are live because we like to chat about all the stuff we've talked about uh, with you, our wonderful community. Keep calm is just to tell me to keep calm, as I did then when the mic went off, and ask once. Ask is the way to get your question asked. Use hashtag ask on the channels you're watching us on now. I get to see them all here. And please only ask your question once. Anyone who cut and pastes their questions goes immediately into my bad books because it's like you're shouting and everyone's shouting and then we can't separate the questions from each other and do our best job. So please only ask your question once. I will answer it if I can. Let's head over then to the comment cam, here we are. We're on the comment cam again. Uh, and um, let's move the microphone back with us as well. Here we go. Hello, we are here with the microphone working again. Uh, right, um, so yeah, you're all saying that the sound's awful. It's because we've had to rely on, uh, on, on the backup mic. But hey, there's another rule of DJing folks, have a backup. Uh, right, so what questions do we have about this today? Um, which is the best mixer to use as a mobile DJ? Right, so um, as a mobile DJ, it doesn't matter if you're talking about a DJ mixer because you can use what you want. There's all kinds of DJ mixers out there. All will do the job as long as you've got the channels you want. But if you're trying to do what I have been talking about here and have your phone as an auxiliary source, that is another way of doing it. So let me tell you quickly. You can get a mixer, a little mixer, and plug the output from your DJ gear, especially if you've got no auxiliary input, into a little mixer like this. And then you can also plug your phone into a little mixer like this, and then plug the output of the mixer off to your speakers. And then you've got a way of mixing in not only your phone, but you could use, you can mix in all kinds of other sources. These little mixers are a great way of adding extra inputs to the inputs that you've been given on your DJ controller. 
So do think if you love your controller and there's, oh, sorry, I keep forgetting the mics over here. Do think that if you love your controller and you don't want to upgrade it just yet, but you uh, you need those extra inputs, go get a mixer, go get a, um, a little mixer like that. You can get them for like 50, 60 pounds. Um, Behringer Zenix are very, very cheap. So go take a look at that. Uh, so, um, this is just a remark from Mixmaster G. The Apple Lightning cable to 3.5 can also serve as an audio input to connect the output of a mixer in case you're using the phone for streaming. Yep, you get mono input to these. These little cables here, having a bad day today, folks. Too much is, uh, is going a bit awry. These little cables here are um, designed to wear your old wired headphones, right, which had a microphone on them. So actually, this is a good way of getting your audio into your phone. So thank you for that, Mixmaster G. Uh, what's the best phone app to use to store an emergency DJ set? I would just use, well, for me, I'd probably just stick it in the files um, and then just play it from the files. Or you could put it in the music app if you're on an app, um, an Apple phone, you could use the music app for that, for instance. Um, but um, yeah, that might work for you. Um, right, so we are talking about ways of connecting your phone while you do it and the best way of doing it uh, to your DJ gear. Uh, and we've covered quite a lot today. Uh, and um, we will um, now jump back onto your live comments and see how you're doing. Brian says, good tip, Phil. You can never have enough backup plans in my, uh, in my opinion. Um, Albert, which little extender mixer do you reckon? The Behringer 802, yeah, that's cool. The one I just showed you is also an audio interface. It's the, um, the Yamaha, I think it's called the 602. I'll go get it again. Tell a lie, it's the Yamaha AG06. This is also an audio interface. Great, great little device. Um, there's little ones by Mackie as well. They're all really good. Um, so um, if it's a tiny little mixer, you don't really need it to do very much. Uh, it's probably gonna do the job just fine for you. Um, so a few people asking that. So we've, uh, we've uh, helped you on that one. Uh, so uh, we're talking today about the way of connecting ways of connecting your phone to your dj gear so i'm just looking for any more questions coming in now about that subject if you've got questions about any other subjects then please just ask them on thursday because we have the same show on a thursday um so um people asking about apps look when you're using um a sample for instance you want to play samples there's loads of sample playing apps uh, on your app store so just go and take a look and look for one with a high uh, with a high rating and give it a go. Most of them are free to try at least. The Ruckus is making a good point. We were talking about mono. If you're in a club, uh, you'll probably be in mono anyway. That's true. Most club audio systems work in mono. That's something that a lot of people don't know. Uh, but it makes sense if you think about it. Because if you're in a club and there's speakers everywhere, there's not going to be a perfect place to stand to get the left and right stereo, right? So in high-end clubs, they have all kinds of surround sound, but in most clubs, it's just all mono. You have the same music coming out of every single speaker. Uh, so you're not wandering around the club and hearing the left-hand side and the right-hand side in different places in the club. Don't make any sense, right? So that's how it works. Drew says, on Virtual DJ, you can run a 3.5 millimeter stereo cable to your mic, line or headphones input and output and choose it as a line input. Yeah, so in Virtual DJ, you can do the same as you can do with uh, tractor and tractor controllers, but your controller needs to be able to support it. And most cheap controllers, the microphone input is not wired into the computer and doesn't matter what software you're using, uh, it's not going to help. Kevin, it's a really good point from Kevin. Um, you can use DJ, Algorithms DJ software in what's called single deck mode. And so you can literally just have one deck play and then you can have that on your tablet or your phone. And then in theory, you could have a go at beat mixing because it's just like having an extra deck. It just kills out all the mixer and the second deck and all that stuff. Uh, so thank you for reminding me about that Kevin that's a really good really good um, uh, point uh, you don't like my music pioneer is really good at giving you adequate inputs well arguably not always the DDJ 200 is uh, has probably got the worst inputs of any DJ controller in history he hasn't even got an audio interface but yep take what uh, I take what you're saying there uh, I'm now scrolling past all the <laughs> all the people saying uh, we have lost audio it's really weird that because our microphones run off rechargeable batteries but on the checklist it is check that the batteries are charged and they were when uh, they were when we um when we went live so they seem to die really quickly uh, i think we're probably done there people uh for today uh thank you for bearing with us uh, the good news i can share with you is that if you head over to the digital dj tips website uh, you will find 
that there is an article that covers everything we talked about here. So if you want to get a few more ideas about uh, about this and you want to get some clicks to clicks to pieces of equipment and so on and some suggestions about what to go and buy, then it's all in this article. Just head over to digitaldjtips.com and scroll down until you find the how to use your phone as a DJ music source. Or here's a tip for you, a general tip. If you click the magnifying glass in the top right hand corner of Digital DJ Tips and search the phrase you want or the word you want, I'm searching phone here, our search results will throw up everything to do with phones. In this case, that is the first article. And this works for anything. We've got over 6,000 free training articles on Digital DJ Tips. So do head over there and do that. And if you uh, are new here and you haven't been put off by the little technical hitches, they happen. We do do this live every week. Uh, and you want to be part of it, then head to this URL digitaldjtips.com slash join. We will email you every week our Tuesday Tips email, which is the best way to improve your DJing and DJ production because it's packed with free tutorials, mixes you can try, and all the news and features from the DJ world to keep you up to speed with what's going on in this great hobby of ours. So do join, and to, as a thank you for joining, we'll give you a copy of our book as a PDF, and we'll also give you our gear guide so you don't make any silly mistakes buying your DJ gear. Right, we're done for today. Thank you for joining with us. Uh, thank you for bearing with us as well. Uh, and I'll see you on Thursday for Thursday Q&A live uh, when it isn't any questions. So whatever questions you have, uh, do come and join us for that and we'll try and answer as many as we can. Uh, but meanwhile, for me, Phil, here in the Digital DJ Tip Studio, get good, get out there, make the moments and we'll see you again very soon. Till next